Welcome to Next Games, a guide to ninja series. Episode 32, Advanced Ninja Gear Swap. Now back in episode 5 of this series, I released my simple ninja gear swap file that does nothing but change gear for you. I then advanced upon it with the help of Boba Fett on my Discord channel in episode 30 of the series with the release of the ninja information panel. I am now releasing a further updated version that improves upon the panel, changes you to your aftercast gear faster, and allows you to change between all of your gear sets and weapons easily while only using five macro banks. This was achieved with the help of Jacob Logan Anderson on my GitHub page, so thanks very much for his assistance. Now I've put these new gear swap files on my GitHub page in the Advanced Lewis section. You can find a link to that in the description of this video. Now the Ninja Information Panel is still available in my new Lua, but it now has three modes that it tracks. Offensive Mode is the aftercast gear set that it's going to put you into. Weapon Skill Mode is the weapon skill set is going to be used, and whether that is going to be doing so with truss buffs or cap buffs in mind. This mode also allows you to select a ranged mode for staying at a distance and using Empyrean Arrow when the time calls for it. Lastly, there is a casting mode, which tells you whether it will cast your next spell in Elemental Gear, Magic Burst Gear, or Fute Gear. Now it continues to track how many of each of the four main ninja tools you currently have in your inventory, as well as how many shadows you currently have up. Next, let's move on to the five macro banks and what each is used for. Please note that you may not have the need for all of these macros, depending on how much of ninja's weapons and gear you have available to you but you should find everything Ninja needs access to within these macros. Let's start with the main bank, which gives us access to our primary macros that we'll be using the majority of the time. This macro bank will normally be used when you are using the Hishi Shuroken in the main hand and the Kunumitsu in the off hand, but it will also be used if you have a Nagi in the main hand and you can use a Gletty Knife in the off hand if you are not magic bursting. Now the top bank of macros starts with Ninja's four major debuffs of Kuriyami, Hojo, Jubaku, and Yurin. Next, we have Ninja's three most common buffs of Kaka, Yonin, and Migawari. And we finish up that row with the three castings of shadows of Ichi, Ni, and San. Now in the second row, we have Provoke in the first position, but you'll notice it's labeled Light. That's to quickly tell us that we are in the light macro bank. It's followed by three macros for weapon skills of Ten, Kamu, and Shun to complete four and five step light and radiance weapon skills. Then we have our Thunder Dual Magic Burst macro, which is the only macro in this bank that is not simply a single line with the usage of the ability. This macro first makes sure that we are in the Magic Burst casting mode, by entering slash console space gs space c space mb space mb nin. It then casts rate and san, followed by a weight of four, and then casting rate and knee. Next, we have the macro for inin, followed by isikigen. We then have berserk, followed by two more weapon skills that create a light skill chain, blade two and blade chi. I can also use them to create a powerful three-step skill chain for mobs vulnerable to hybrid weapon skills. Note that if you're using a Dragoon subjob instead of Warrior, you can always use Jump in place of the Provoke macro and High Jump in place of the Berserk macro. Next, let's go down two macro banks, which is our Dark Weapon Skill Bank. It mirrors the main macro bank, which we just went over, but it's darkness-based weapon skills, so let's go ahead and go over the differences in this bank. In the second row, we have Provoke again in that first slot, followed by the weapon skills of Chi, Retsu, and He, to complete three and four step darkness weapon skills, followed by our dual magic burst for Ice, that is again our only macro in this bank that includes more than a single execute command, and follows the same commands gone over for the dual lightning magic burst spoken of above. Then at the end of this row, we have changed the last three slots to execute Tachi Eka, Savage Blade, and Blade Metsu. You will find this Darkness Macro Bank most useful when using the weapons of Kanagi, Kikoku, Hachi or Nagling in the main hand, and Kunumitsu for Magic Bursting or Gledi's Knife if not in the offhand. 
let's now discuss the macro bank that I have in between the light and dark banks. It's our ninjutsu bank. This bank allows us to quickly cast any of our elemental ninjutsu spells using our elemental gear instead of our magic burst gear, as well as giving us the use of bonus fute damage and extra ninja buffs. Now in the first row, we have the macros for Asha and Myoshu, and at the end of that first row, we have Yane and Gekka to help control our enmity. At the end of the next row, we have Monomi and Tonko to hide from our enemies. Now all six of these macros simply execute the ninjutsu casting and nothing else. However, we have the six elemental knee spells up top and the six elemental sand spells down below, and all of those have an added line in their macros, making sure we're in our elemental casting mode by having the command of slash console space gs space c space mb space e-l-e-n-i-n -E on the first line, followed by the spell on the second. Now in regards to the first two slots in that first bank, the second one executes Fute and nothing else. The first one though does a dual thunder magic burst using our Fute gear for the sand spell and the magic burst gear for our knee spell. Note that if you find yourself magic bursting with Fute with other spells more often such as Blizzard, then you can always change the spells used here accordingly. This leaves our last two macro banks for gear selection and weapon selection. The first bank's primary use is weapon selection. The first macro in this bank simply uses the command to set my lock style and then make sure that this particular Lua is loaded. The next macro bank executes the command for me to mount. The two after that are for movement increases during the day and nighttime since I don't have my Lua doing that for me automatically. They simply equip the right foot pieces for that time of day. The fifth macro puts me in my Treasure Hunter 4 gear set for drops. Once again, I do this through way of just equipping an equipment set, but you can also just manually set all of these pieces here through individual commands if you wish. My sixth macro is to use a holy water for my inventory, and the next one resets the scoreboard and parse calculations. Now you can obviously use those last two macros that I've gone over for any unique purposes that you may see fit to your unique play style. The rest of the macros in this bank will now switch me to using specific weapons. At the end of row one, we have a macro to put me in my Hachi Manji and my chosen grip. This is for Tachi Egha. The next macro swaps me into my Nagling and Hitaki combo for Savage Blade spam. This is followed by my dual wield set, which simply equips a maximum dual wield gear set along with my Gokutai for 100 TP per tick regain as a way to start fights off with a powerful weapon skill. Note, as soon as you hit another action button, it's automatically going to change you back to your normal aftercast set. So as soon as you actually execute a weapon skill, that TP will be gone. Now in the next row, we first have a macro that equips Kokoku in the main hand and Kunimitsu in the off hand. Now the next two macros are for the Kanagi. The first equips it with a Galetti knife and the second with a Kunimitsu. The next three macros swap me into three sets utilizing the Hishi Shirokin in the main hand. The first macro is for non-magic burst use with the Galetti knife. The second swaps that for the Kunimitsu in the off hand and is for use with magic burst and hybrid weapon skills. The third swaps in the Hitaki for the offhand slot for that Kunimitsu, and it's best used with Blade 10, and in certain situations, hybrid weapon skills, though the Kunimitsu would normally give you better overall damage when used with hybrids these days. Now in the seventh slot, it equips our Nagi in the main hand with Gladys Knife in the offhand for maximum melee damage. I then have the three Fudo Masamune paths noted to easily swap between those. Note that it, when you have different Fudo Masamunes, the only way to pull this off is by using equipment sets and not by the command. Both Fudo Path A and B I'm pairing with a Gladys Knife, and Path C I pair with a Siru. So now that we've gone over an easy way to swap between all of our different weapon options, let's next go over our fifth and final macro bank, which sets for us to what aftercast and weapon skill modes we wish to be in. For the first row, we have three different sets of gear, each with a dual wield zero, dual wield 20, and dual wield 40 option for varying degrees of haste buffs. Now the first three are for malignance gear sets, while the second three are for kendatsuba gear sets, 
And the final three is for pure DD gear sets where you don't care about things such as evasion and magic evasion. Each of these macros simply enters the command for us to change to that piece of aftercast gear after all future actions. So in the first slot, the command is slash console space gs space c space tp space dw0. And that will always put us back into the malignant dual wield zero gear set. Note that this change happens immediately as opposed to after your next action as in my previous Lua's. Now in our second row, we have all of our utility gear sets. Maximum accuracy, evasion, magic defense, magic evasion, and maximum counter. Each selected with the same type of command as shown for that malignant set. So you can quickly move up and toggle a different aftercast gear set at any time. In addition, there is a maximum hit point gear set that pushes us close to 4,800 hit points with Yonin up and makes it so that you don't leave that gear set again until you select another so that hit point level will not drop during casting and weapon skills. Now to make this work, you need to set up an equipment set in the game for your maximum hit points and then equip it as part of this macro. We also use the slash console space gs space c space tp space hp command to tell the gear swap file not to swap our gear until further notice. Now keep in mind that if these shown gear sets don't mesh with your playstyle, you are free to create any differing gear sets you wish as long as they are identified in the Lua. Speaking of the Lua, now that we've finished looking at how the macro banks are set up, let's head over to the actual file itself and go through how it will alter it to fit your needs. First, when you open the file, all the functions and such at the top can make it very confusing for new users, so just skip past all those until you see the section that says sets.precast. This section contains a utsemi and a fastcast section, and it is where you will want to put your fastcast gear sets for casting, utsesemi, and your other ninjutsu. Now in case you're unaware of how to get your gear sets from the game to this lua, let me go ahead and explain that. While in the game, you want to equip the gear set that you're trying to transfer over, and then type slash slash gs space export. Now, go to the gear swap slash data slash export folder to find your newly exported gear set. Open it, and copy over the necessary gear lines. Normally this will mean everything from ammo down to your back piece. You do not want to include weapons in the Lua, so be sure not to move over the main and sub lines. Next, let's move down to the midcast section. This includes all the sets we will switch to when executing an ability to get maximum damage and effectiveness. Now, the enmity gear set is what you should be in for using things like Provoke. Eli Nin is what the set is that you should be in when you're casting Elemental Ninjutsu. MB Nin is the set you're in when magic bursting. Fute is the set you're in when using Fute to boost a spell's damage. ENF Nin is the set you're in when you want to maximize your magic accuracy to enfeeble your foe. And lastly, Waltz Potency is the set used to make sure your waltzes are capped on effectiveness. This brings us to the weapon skill gear set, of which there are many, and you will note I've even defined the most effective sword, dagger, club, hand-to-hand, -hand, and great katana weapon skill possibilities. After those, we have our aftercast sets. Now these are the sets we want to be put back into after we execute an action. Now the top three are our malignance gear sets in the forms of dual wield 40, 20, and 0. Then come our three Kendatsuba gear sets with the same three forms and our pure DD gear sets, again with the three forms of dual wield. We then define our accuracy, evasion, magic evasion, magic defense, and maximum counter. If you wanted to create your own gear sets, you can simply copy and paste one of my sections and name it something different and then call upon it from the console gsctp command. Just make sure the name that follows that command matches what you have shown in your Lua file. Now I do have one last thing to show you, and that's the last three slots in my macro bar in that fifth bank in the game. These are for trust, party, and range situations. If you're someone who plays solo 100% of the time, you probably won't have use for these and can just use this single Lua file. But if you swap back and forth between solo and party play, you may find use with this. 
These macros swap us back and forth between three possible Lua files that are for trust buffs, party buffs, and range situations. The first macro simply lowers the normal Ninja Lua file, which is normally loaded for trust buff situations. The second macro puts us into a ranged setup, which is useful when you only will be doing ranged damage, such as in Odyssey bosses. This keeps you in the best range accuracy gear possible for TP and make sure not to change your ammo pieces as the other Luas would do. This macro uses a command of slash console space GS space load space ninja ranged to load the range ninja Lua. It also uses the commands to equip my Uller and arrows. Now the last macro will load your party buffs Lua and simply uses the command slash console space gs space load space ninja p to load that file. Now I know this file won't work for all ninja out there, but I hope that it's at least a good starting point for people who don't already have a reliable ninja gear swap Lua file. I specifically made my gear swap files to not do things automatically for me, such as change me into gear based on specific situations or in response to circumstances. So if you're looking for a Ninja Lua that does that, you sadly won't have much luck with that here. Now the one thing that this does do is cancel your shadows right before a lesser Utsesame spell goes off so that you can overwrite a higher level shadows. If you have any questions on the Lua, you can post them on my GitHub or discuss them with me on my Discord channel. That's going to be it for this episode of A Guide to Ninja Series. I hope you found that helpful. If this is your first visit to my channel and you enjoyed the content, please be sure to click the subscribe button under the video and the bell icon next to it to be notified when my future videos are released. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time. Stay safe and stay healthy out there.